time to ask questions of your leaders, teachers, and preachers. Far too long you have stumbled in darkness searching for light. We have a man in our midst who can bring forth truth back beyond doubt, that can open the eyes and ears of those lost in darkness. As Saeed El Imam Isa Hadi Abadi is that man, and the author of over 150 books of a religious and scientific nature. As Saeed El Imam Isa Hadi Abadi has brought forth this information straight from the scriptures, so it cannot be denied. So we invite you to listen, to learn from the true light featuring As Saeed El Imam Isa Hadi Abadi. Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it? And that he is alone and has no partners? And that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes? All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of his prophets and his apostles and on the Messiah, the anointed one and on the Mahdi, the God, and on the Mujadda, the Reform, which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. You are now listening to The True Light with As Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. Okay, did you answer the question about the uh, gospel bondage, please? It was uh, chapter 25, verse 3 to 7. Does this parable relate to the manner in which a Muslim should live? And also, does it, what is its literal meaning? Okay, it's speaking, first of all, if we listen to it, we find out who it's speaking to. It was speaking to David, right? Yes. And David was one of the kings of Israel, correct? Yes. And the kings of Israel governed the law over the tribes of Israel of which Jesus said he was from, correct? Of the house of David. Yes. So now who does this sound like it applies to? Muslims or Christians and Jews? Well, you see, if you, I don't uh -huh. understand the question because if Jesus is supposed to be a Muslim, how can it apply to Christians and Okay, because Jesus came after Moses, after David and them to correct the mistakes that they were making. That's what he said. I come not to change, but to confirm, to fulfill. So what was being admitted by Isa ibn Maryam at the time, alayhi salatu wasalam, which is Jesus, the son of Mary, is that the people before him had started making errors, had started over-exaggerating the law. That's what he came to teach, correct? And he came to correct that. And Barnabas and them were teaching his teachings. You follow that? And they were saying that people must be held by a range. You must control people. Horses are kept within inside a certain perimeter. You don't let them run wild. He was saying that people must be controlled because there was an ark of the tabernacle set up for the 12 tribes of Israel in Exodus where you see all the tribes had to live together and drink from, from separate fountains. And that they were told not to cover thy neighbor's wife, not to mix with people outside, don't mix your blood. That they had certain laws and commandments that they would live by. That is what they're describing, the law, the, the, the discipline that's necessary in any religious community. But no, this was not talking about the sons and daughters of Islam. This was talking about prior to Al-Islam in a time of Daud on up to Jesus where he had come to correct those extremities that these people had enforced upon the children of Israel that was making them go astray. You understand? Okay, thank you. Okay, this is my last question. Um, in the Gospel of Bible proceeds is a script that precedes every verse. Okay, what does that mean? What we do, as, a, as opposed to Jehovah's Witnesses or a lot of other Muslims or Christians, and they just take the scripture and throw it at you. And you have no way of checking the words or the translation in hopes that, inshallah, one day you all will be speaking your language again. You're able to look up above the English at the Arabic and read it and see that it says the same thing. This is a way of us showing people how a lot of Arabs come into this country or Arabic-speaking people and misguide because they say things like Allah, then they say God. And Allah is not God, it's two different things. And then they say, um, uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most compassionate. And that's not what it translates, literally, it doesn't translate that. 
So what we do is we try to be as literal as possible in our translations for what it says, regardless of how people feel, because people are entitled to know al-haq min Allah Ta'ala. The facts beyond any doubt from Allah, and not interpretations of men. That is why people are confused, because they keep getting human beings' interpretations and not quotes. If you read our books, you see that after everything we say, we put a quote to back it. We go to the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Sohutbin, everything to back it by scripture. Most Muslims, if you read their literature, everything is backed by hadith, 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 hadith. Hadith will not get you into Jannah. Hadith can get you into Jahannam. Meaning, hadith cannot get you into paradise, but it can surely get you into hell. But if you read this Quran, this Qur'an, min Allah ta'ala, an nur al-ard, wa samawati, the light of the heavens and the earth is the Qur'an. If you live by it, you will make paradise. You cannot live by Bukhari and Shafi and Hamli and Maliki because they were not sent from Allah. They were companions or friends or associates or people informed by people who was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they were not from Allah. So hadith is not divinely inspired like the Qur'an is. And to match hadith with Qur'an is, them, is a sin, a great sin. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the compassionate, and by the will of Allah, I'd like to ask. He said that God, Allah is not God, right? The Quran says Allah, and the Bible says God, so now I am... Okay, let's, let me explain. If you read an English translation of the Quran by Yusuf Ali, okay? He says God too. You understand? The point is that Muslims are being exposed when you get these Qurans from Pakistan, they have Arabic on one side and English on the other. But whenever you get a Bible, you don't get it with Arabic on one side and English on the other. Where they are available also. And if you read the Bible in Arabic, you'd see that they use Allah. They don't use God. And we as Muslims know that when Allah says, Huwa al-Ladhi, la ilaha illa huwa, He's trying to enforce a statement. Allah, la ilaha illa huwa, the Quran says, ayat al-Kursi. أشهد أن لا إله إلا هو هو الذي لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام. He's trying to enforce something for us. He's trying to tell us his name is Allah. When we even say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم, what we're really saying is بإسمي by way of the name Allah, who is الرحمن الرحيم. But they translate it in the name of Allah. Instead of ba ismi, not fi ismi, not ma ismi, not anda ismi, but ba ismi. By way, in, lo, in the Arabic language, for instance, if you take the word qalam, pen, and you're going to make the statement that I write with the pen, the word for with in the sense of uh, using is be. at bil qalam. I write by way of a pen. I don't never say at ma qalam. Ma is to accompany someone. Ali, who ma Rasulullah. Ali, he's with the apostle of Allah. Anda, anda is possession of. If I said Andy, Andy Burtaga, I have an orange with me. You follow? But in the language of Arabic, we use the be with a kesra to say by way of something. Ana ettab, I write bil kalam with the with the pen using this pen. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this for the tasmiyah, Bismillah, He was trying to say, by way of the name Allah, do you understand His attributes? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Qudus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'minu, Al-Muhammad, etc., etc. So what happens to us here in America is you're being exposed to people who are translators from word to word. They're not translators for meaning. They don't know the essence of the Arabic language, so they say Allah means God, Rahman means merciful, Rahim means compassionate, and they go on. They say Bab means door, they say uh, Hijab means veil, etc., 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 and this is not true. These are not translations by meaning, these are word comparisons. They're starting to compare words. Allah, Allah is alone, no partners has He. Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu. You follow what I'm saying? No partners has he. In Surah Al-Ikhlas of the Qur'an, Allah has given us a very serious lesson. When he says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Qul. He's talking to somebody here when he says Qul. He's saying Qul. Now who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to? 
He's talking to Muhammad Rasulullah because he's ordering him. Because Kul is the order tense of to proclaim or to make a statement or to say this. Kul Muhammad, who Allahu. Kul, who Allahu. This is what Muslims overlook. That's a very important statement. Kul, who Allahu. Before we even say Ahad, just to get past that. Kul, who Say Muhammad. The Hua, the Hua, is the same, the mystical name, the hundredth attribute of Allah, which Ben Israel misused, which is when they said Yahweh, which later became known as Jehovah. Yah is a, is a prefix on all Arabic pronouns or descriptive nouns where you say Ya Ali, Ya Fatima, Ya Muhammad. You call out like that in Arabic or Hebrew. So when Israel was saying Yahweh, which later got mistranslated to Jehovah, they was really referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but did not want to misuse his name in the presence of the kafirun, those people who would, who would blaspheme Allah's name. So they would just say, Hua, Hua, He, He sent me. He is who He is. So Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, asked Allah ta'ala on the mountain of Thor. He said, Who should I say is sending me? Who should I say when they say, Send Arsala, who has made me an apostle, is what He really said. Send Rasul. Who should I say is made me this apostle so that they believe me? He said, I am who I am. You see that? Hua again. Allah the. Hua. I am who I am. Okay. So it is very important that we Muslims, we are Mu'minu wa Mu'minati, we must go out and tell the world that Shaitan is the one trying to make us think that Allah is God. God is attributed to too many low life things in the language that it comes out of. It is wrong for us to call Allah the Lord. Allah is not the Lord. Allah is Rabbil Alameen. The word Rabb comes from the word to sustain, to take care of. Like a housewife is called Rabbat Manzal, one who takes care of the residents in Arabic. Allah is Rabbil Alameen, who takes care of all living things. To call Allah a Lord, we have a problem when we get to England, the UK, where people, where men are called lords. We have a problem when it comes down to paying the rent <laughs> in America to a landlord. You follow? It is very important that Muslims be this intricate, that we go into the depth of it for the sake of the children. Because when you bring Al Islam into another language, this is where you have the problems. Because the meanings in one language are different than the, than the language of Lord Al Arabiya, which the Quran was sent down to us in. It is two different languages. So it's very very important when you're teaching that language that you differentiate the meanings of words. So when you teach your children concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say one of his attributes is khalaq, al khaliq the creator. Because there is no real translation of Allah. Allah is who he is. Allah huwa alladhi la ilaha illa huwa. There is no translation. You say Allah means the creator. You see, you always use one of his attributes as the translation. Allah means the compassionate. Allah means the yielder. What does Allah mean? Allah means, look, El the Lillah, the source of all things that, that exist. But He is not God because God can be made feminine and Allah cannot be made feminine. There's goddess in English. God, goddess, but Allah cannot be made into a feminine gender as a word. Though the Meccans tried and called it Allah, Ali and Bilal tore those statues down when the uh, when the Ansar Allah returned from Medina to Nur, back to Mecca, and reestablished Deen al-Islam in the sacred city of Ibrahim, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So it's real important that you understand that in the English Quran that they have in America, they have God. So the Bible, you will find the bad translations. This is why we spend so much time in our books translating things for people, so that they can see it. And it's very touchy when it comes to the Bible because oftentimes there's quotes that we read out the King James Bible that when I read it in the original text that I have, the old Torah, it's not the same thing. But if I take and translate it, you know what they're going to say? This is not what it says in my Bible. You know how narrow-minded Christians are. This is not what it says in my Bible. He must have made this up. Because they don't see the true Bible. They don't know. So it's very important that Muslims learn Lughatukum. Lughatukum is our language Arabic. We got to learn that. So that we can read the Quran in Arabic, read the Torah in Arabic, read Zubur in Arabic, read Al-Injil in Arabic, and Kitab al-Hikmah 
which is mentioned in the Quran, the Book of Wisdom of the Prophet Luqman. We have to learn to read these books in Arabic so we cannot be misled. This is why the Ansar of our community has brought all that land of state and we are setting up a village so that we can go there and live the Sharia, live according to fiqh, live according to the Sunnah to Rasulullah and not just say we do and not live it. We got to live the Sunnah, not just say we are following the Sunnah, I'm a Sunni. We don't say we're Sunnis, that's just the name. We want to live his Sunnah. We want to liken ourselves to the Prophet Muhammad because the Quran says that he is the best of examples. You see, so it's not talk. Ansars are trying to do and we're trying to get other Muslims out there to realize that they may have disagreements with a lot of things in our doctrine. But the foundation of our doctrine is Tawheed, the same foundation of theirs. And the kalim that we stand on is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's no difference there. The little tribute things either will grow out of our mistakes or they'll grow into our wisdom. Regardless of who's wrong, it doesn't make a difference because it says the Quran, the truth will prevail and false things will perish. But join into the big Jama, the central, and build from there. Y'all got children out there. We have imported teachers from Sudan, from Saudi Arabia. We got teachers from all over the world teaching children Arabic every day. We have Arabic classes for the, for the adults in the mosque every day being taught by children who have been taught by Arabs from the time they were born until now they're 19 here in America. Our big boys are over in Arab countries in schools going right now. Don't listen to those people out there who say that we're not recognized, that we're not Muslims, that we have our children in Arab schools right now studying to come back to America to teach. Because with all the wealth the so-called Saudians have, they won't send y'all a good teacher. They won't build a central mosque in New York. They won't send, spend time translating the Quran for you. They won't set up Arabic classes. They won't set up fiqh or jurisprudent classes. They won't teach. Because they don't want y'all to find Deen of Islam because if you do, you're going to see how many, how much hypocrites they are when they come over here in the tensions of going to school to study political science and then find their way to a mosque for refuge and then become an imam. They're not imams because they want to be, they're imams because they got to pay intuition. That's what you got to find out that we have a plight in America. And we have our own plight and it has to be done here. And the Deen is here. We brought teachers in to work for us and they teach. And we teach Arabic of the Quran all day to our children. Don't let your children suffer because you disagree with how we feel about Abraham or Muhammad. Get them into the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah now. And most of these Imams out there or Aima, they don't know Arabic. They can't read it fluently. They play around with the language. They don't know it. And they're misusing people. And time is running out on us. So we have to get out of the city, get up on our own land, and live Al-Islam until Yaman Akhir. It's not about trying to overthrow the white man, the heck with the white man, the black man, the green man, the purple man, the red man, the gray man. We got to get into living Islam and take out the heart that's in your body and throw it on the floor and replace it with the Quran and make it your heart and make it your eyes, make it your mouth, make it your ears. Hear things by way of El Quran. Don't hear by nothing else. When a person is talking, say, where in the Quran does it say that? You know? Love by way of the Qur'an. Love people who live in the Qur'an. When they speak, it's Qur'an. See by way of the Qur'an. Smell, it tells us the scents we should surround ourselves in, the colors we should wear. It tells us what to eat, how to eat, how to walk, who to talk to and who not to talk to. It tells us don't make friends with Christians and Jews. We as Muslims have to stop playing and come together for our children. The children of the light. They are the future. Izaj Nasrullahi wal Fatih. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدَخُلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهِ يَفْوَجَهِ فَسَبَّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابًا يَدَخُلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهِ يَدَخُلُونَ It says in that verse, they enter into the deen of Allah. They don't say, you yeah, enter the deen of Islam. It says, يَدَخُلُونَ فِي الدِّينِ اللَّهِ يَفْوَجَهِ In groups. We have a concern for the future of our children today. We got to stop playing and go move forward. Teach them Allah. Don't teach them God. Because then they're going to be caught up on Christmas and Halloween and Michael Jackson and Prince and a bunch of other freaks that nature is producing now just to take us off Sabil Allah. Take us away from the Sunnah to Rasulullah and make us feel guilty about being Muslims and make us feel out of place. So we got to live together. You walk through this neighborhood with a veil on, dressed in your Sunnah, you're not out of place. But if you walk down Fulton Street, you are. So that we're, therefore, like Rasulullah, we got to set up our own Medina and get ourselves strong in one place first. So we gotta come together and live for other bodies like Sheikh Dawood of State Street used to constantly teach everybody. 
which they wouldn't listen to him. They listened to any Pakistan that fell out the sky, but they wouldn't listen to a man who already established a jama here. To live for, of, and by each other for our children. So I live in the Sunnah, not just saying I'm Sunni, or I'm Shia, or I'm Ahmadiyya, but live the Sunnah to Rasulullah. Then you're in your deen. And believe me, the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, makes it very clear. I read it all the time because it's the most profound section of the Quran on who is mu'min and who isn't mu'min. Right from Surah Al-Baqarah 1, you read it and it's so clear. It separates all those who are with Allah from those who are not. Um, you said something about the hadiths, you know, and all this, and we practice sunnah, and you, you contradict it, and then you say for it, and... You know, Let me straighten up something. That there's a difference between the sunnah of Rasulullah and the hadith. You see, the sunnah is the way the prophets had did things. The hadith are the books that men wrote about those things, which does not make them right. This is the point. Just because they add the word sahih on the hadith, the word sahih means correct. But whoever wrote it put that on the cover. The Rasulullah did not proofread the hadith himself because they were collected after him to verify. So here's what I'm trying to say. We got to learn to live the sunnah of Rasulullah, not follow a bunch of books written by men. How and, we, how, forgive me for interrupting you. Uh, sure. Um, but how, how can we follow such a fabulous man and his followers, his wives, mm -hmm. you know? How, if we don't read? You know? I'll show you right here. Open the Holy Quran to the second chapter. This is the sunnah. I have it. Huh? I have Okay, now listen what happens. Alif, Lam, Meem. Right? Alif, Allah, Lam, Laylatul Qadri. The night which Allah sent down the Quran, Meem, to Muhammad. This is what this a science of this letter. Alif, Lam, Meem. Alif is Allah. Lam is Laylatul Qadri, the night of power. And Meem is Muhammad. Now here's what it says. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب في هدى للمتقين this scripture, there has no doubt in it, singular, in it, you see, Huden Lil Muttaqid. It is a guidance for those who have taqwa, fear, tremble at the mention of Allah, like you said. Alladina yu'minuna, you see this? Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaybi wa yuqimuna salati wa mimma razaqnahum yunfikun. Who are these who have taqwa? It says, Alladina, those who yu'minun are faithful bi in things that they have not seen. Not faithful in books that they read. These people are faithful in things they have not seen. Alladina yu'minun bil ghaybi wa yuqimun salati wa mimma razaqnahum yunfikun. And, wa yuqimun, they exalt people to get up. Qum, qakamati salah, qakamati, that's what they mean. Qakamati salah, they make people get up for salah. Wa mimma razaqnahum, and of the things, wa mimma, from the things, razaqa, they come from ar-razaq, Allah, who provided, they do what? They yunfikun, baka, they give it to people, they realize nothing belongs to them. This is teaching us how to live. Wa alladhina yu'minun bimma unzila alayka wa ma unzila min qablika. Why? And what else about these people? Well, Ladina and these are those who you mean or they are faithful or believe by way of, not in what, by way of. See that B again, like Bikalim? By way of Anzal, what was sent down, Ilaika, in a single form to you, Muhammad. They're speaking to Well, Ladina, you mean on Unzil Alaika. Then it goes on. وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And وَمَا What أُنزِلَ Was sent down me from قَبْلِكَ Before you, Muhammad, they know where they get their law from. They get their law from what was given to you, Muhammad. Singular. They're using the word kaf here. They're not using the word kum. Like when they say, لَكُمْ دِنُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ To you be the way you're judged and me be the way I'll be judged. By al deen that's plural. But in this sense, Allah Ta'ala is using a singular because he's talking directly to Muhammad so they can establish what we should be doing as mu'minun. You follow? وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْكَ To you, Muhammad. وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And what was before you, Muhammad. وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ And on the last, or yamad akhir, وَبِالْآخِرِ And by way of the last day, hum, 
you know, they are certainly going to make it. Who is going to make it? Those people, let's go back. Those people who recognize that this Quran does not have any doubts in it. It's unquestionable. That's step one. And these are those who are faithful, even though they did not see you, Muhammad, in the flesh. Even though they did not see Allah in the flesh. Even though they did not see a different Mike, Michael or uh, Jibreel in the flesh. They're still faithful. You follow? Then it says, and they're the ones who get people to come to worship. They propagate. They try to get people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They keep up their prayer. They enforce their prayer. And they try to get others to do it. And of all the things that they've got, they give. This is Salat, this is Zakat coming up. Of all the things that Allah has provided for them, they give it freely. They don't think of anything as theirs in this world. They realize they're just passing through this world on into Jannah. Okay? If that's talking about who they are, it goes on. And these people, they are the ones who believe in what was given to you, Al-Quran, Muhammad. And they believe in what was given before you. And this is where the problem between, let's say, Ansar's, and most Muslims have their problem. Because we go right to this quote and say, Allah does not make mistakes. He said, Muhammad, these people that's going to make it in paradise believe in what we gave to you, meaning the Quran, and they use the same words, no change. And the thing about it, they say, but the Torah was tampered with and the India was tampered with. Then why didn't Allah mention it right there? This was written after the Torah and the Injil. This was the time to mention it. Allah don't make mistakes, he would have said. However, the Torah in the Injil cannot be trusted like the Quran. He didn't say that. He just went on and said, they believe in what we sent down to you, Muhammad, and what we sent down before you, Muhammad. What was before Muhammad? The Torah, the Injil, the Zubur, the Suhuf, and Kitab al-Hikmah. These are the writings that came before Muhammad. We don't make any. What does the Holy Quran chapter 2, verse 136 say? La nufarik bayna. We do not make any distinctions. You see that? Between them. We believe in Allah, in all of his books, in all of his apostles. We don't make any distinction, it says. And the Quran clearly says, this is our guideline. This is our sunnah. And the people who do those things I just mentioned, in the last day, they will make it. We will return with the true light after this brief intermission. Now is the time to ask questions of your leaders, teachers, and preachers. Where did all the races of people come from? Why did John have to baptize Jesus at the Jordan? And why do the four Gospels contradict each other? The answer to these questions can be with only one man, as Sa'id and Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi, the man who has written over 150 books on such topics as, Is There Life on Other Planets? How Were the Pyramids Built? What Race Was Adam and Eve? And Was the Holy Quran Made Up by Muhammad? Or Was It a Divine Scripture Sent from the Most High? And What Is the Difference Between the Spirit and the Soul? The answer to these questions can be found in the most dynamic books in history, authored by As Sa'id Ali Mamis al Hadi and Mahdi. These books can be purchased at the original Tetsu Kita at 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. Would you like to see the man behind the voice you hear teaching the total truth? He is there at the Hall of Knowledge, located at 548 Hart Street, Brooklyn, New York. Every Saturday and Sunday at 1 p.m., the Nubian Islamic Hebrews would like to invite you to question and answer classes with As Sa'id Ali Mamis al Hadi and Mahdi. Come listen and learn. Hear the words of truth for yourself. Hear the answers to long-awaited questions. Also for your spiritual growth, an intricate design woven prayer rug designed by the hand of Sayyid Ali Mamis al Hadi Mahdi. Also available are prayer beads, incense, and oils. If you would like any further information on these items, contact the original tents of Kidar, 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11221. And be sure to ask for a listing of the most dynamic books in history, authored by Sayyid Ali Mamis al Hadi Mahdi. Now let us continue with the true light. Remember, you are the light, and you have the power over all things. Then it goes on to continue. It starts to tell us about another group of people. First, it tells you that these people are the ones who are ula'ika ala hudam mirabbihim wa ula'ika humu muflihun. Ula'ika, these are you, the singular, these are a group of people singled out amongst all humanity, ala huden. They're on the huden, right? On the guidance. And we go right back to the first verse, we see, Zalika al-kitabu la reba fi huden. See that right there? These are those who are huden lil muttaqib. Right there, the same word pops up at the end of that verse, it comes right up here again. 
says, Ula'ika ala huda mirabbihim, wa ula'ika humu muslihun. These are on the guidance from their sustainer, not Lord. Allah is the sustainer. He is Rabbil Alameen. He sustains every living thing in existence. And everything that's coming into existence, he knows about it before it comes into existence. He knows what we keep in our hearts and what we say out of our mouths. He knows when we're yelling and he knows when we're whispering. He knows when we're crying. He knows when we laugh. Because he is El Alim. And we've got to establish the facts of Allah right from the Quran, not from any men. Men are misleading us. Right to his words. <laughs> These are you, they are the what? Maliha. Those are the people that are certainly sure, certain, they know who they are. Then it goes on. Inna kafaru aswahum alayhim. You see that? Surely there are those who are kafaru, who conceal, not disbelieve, nothing disbelieves in Allah. Everything, even a kafir who says there is no God, has to believe that there is no God. <laughs> in order to say that statement, there is no such thing as Allah. How can you say there is no such thing as something that doesn't exist? You couldn't conceive a thing to say it doesn't exist. So in order to say it doesn't exist, you have to believe that the thing that you say don't exist, exists. <laughs> they can't get around the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it says, but there are those who seek to cover the truth. It is equal as sawa'un alayhim. It is equal on them. And their tahum. Whether you warn them, am lam ya tundirhum. Or you don't warn them. What? La yu'minun. There's another group of people he's telling us. And you can jump up and down all day and say, look what the Quran says. It says believe in the Torah and the Injil. You can warn them about the days. You can warn them about the shaitan, the enemies. You can warn them about hadith and misguided books. And, you can warn, and they still will not believe, it says. It tells you right there in the Quran, surely those who conceal the truth, it is equal on them whether you warn them, emblem, or warn them not, they will not believe. Why won't they believe? I'll tell you why. Khatama Allah ala kulubihim. Khatama. Allah has put a seal on their hearts. Khatama Allah ala kulubihim. Khatama. Allah has put a seal on their hearts. They had to have found their way to Deen al Islam to get their hearts sealed, you know. Khatama Allah ala kulubihim. وعلى سمهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولاهم عذاب عظيم ختم الله الله يسبر السيل على قلوبهم on their hearts وعلى سمهم and over their ears or their hearing وعلى أبصارهم and the inner sight غشاوة has a screen on it ولاهم عذاب عظيم and for them ولاهم عذاب is a pain Azim that is supreme because they cover the truth. And what does it say? And nas and of the people may there are some who say Amana Billahi Walyamr Ahri. They are those who say they are with they believe in Allah and in this last day. But they are not in with you. They say they're with you, but they're not with you. They say they're faithful, but they're not. They're with you, then they go smoke reefer and light up cigarettes and go out and do things that are, which is against what Rasulullah taught. You have many Arabs, I know I travel all over the world. Arabs come to this country professing to be Muslims and over there they're the biggest Catholics you can think of. They don't do nothing Islamic. They come here and grow their beard. Over there they don't wear beards. They come here and put on a, a jalebi on Friday. Over there, they were trying to dress like Americans. Travel around the world, you see them yourself. You know it. It's telling us, it's, Allah is warning us of what the sunnah of Rasulullah is. It's in the Quran. These people, they seek to deceive Allah and those who are faithful. وَمَا يَدَّعُونَ But they do not deceive anyone إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ Except their own inner self. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ But they don't have the ability to feel it. The word شَعَرَ means to feel, the emotions. They're, they're sealed off from emotions. They can do devilishment and call themselves righteous Muslim. 
فی قلوبهم مرضا فزادهم الله مرضا ولاهم عذاب نالیب In their hearts is a marada, a sickness, a disease. Fazadahum, fazadid, zad, fazada. And so Allah, He adds on or increases. Fazadahum, Allahu maradan, their disease. Walahum, alabu nalib. And their pain is alim, it's an eternal aching. Why? Why they feel like, here's why. Bima kana yadribun. Because all they do is sit around and lie. They lie. They keep saying things about Allah that ain't true. You say, in the name of God, say, brother, this is Juma. You could say in the name of Allah. We all Muslims. Well, in America, y'all people speak English. We say Allah. Say, this is blasphemy. Well, you don't have to. You can wear any color you want. How did the Prophet Muhammad's wives dress? Did the Prophet Muhammad's wives go out? Read the 33rd chapter of the Quran. The wives of the Prophet was told to stay in the house. So we got to set up communities where we live inside, not outside. It keeps on, the sunnah of Rasulullah is in this Qur'an. That's why he said those who read this Qur'an and follow my sunnah. He put them one, two. My people are those who read the Qur'an and follow my sunnah. So you get the sunnah right out of the Qur'an, because they told us in the Qur'an to read the Torah and the Injil. And we know that circumcision came from the Torah. We know that our fasting came from the Torah. We know that our um, sacrifices came from the Torah, from Mila. Ibrahim mentioned in the Quran in the second chapter 130th verse anyone who tries to deny or forsake Abraham's religion he is Sufa. he makes a fool when of himself and Muhammad followed Abraham's religion and we follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we follow his sunnah which we find right in this Quran it has no doubts or questions in it we can learn fully how to live in the Quran and what we miss in this text here he said is in the books before it which I read earlier. Jesus taught us how to prosper. He said Jesus fell on his face and he prayed. Moses fell on his face and he prayed. He took his shoes off with holy ground. Christians don't take their shoes off. Jews don't take their shoes off in the synagogues. Only Muslims do. They said, cover your head. Christians don't do it. Only Muslims and Jews do it. Don't eat pork. Don't do this. Everything we do is the same laws that was given to Abraham and Moses. That is our lifestyle. Those people calling themselves Jews now are hypocrites. And I could go on. The Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, is so beautiful. It tells us about everything we're supposed to do. It, it just goes on. وَإِذَا كِلَ اللَّهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ When it said to them, stop causing trouble in the world. They say, surely, we're not troublemakers, we're peacemakers. <laughs> right there in all the Quran, it tells you that. In 11th verse. And then it says, أَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ هُمْ مُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ Now surely all they are is troublemakers, but they don't even know it. They go around the world, call themselves on tabligh, and spreading lies and misinterpreting Islam, but they don't even realize, they think they're teaching the truth. Why do they do that? It says right there, وَإِذَا كِلَ اللَّهُمْ أَمَنَا كَمَا أَمَنَا النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنْ نُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا أَمَنَا أَصْفَاهُ إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ and when it is said to them, believe as kama amana, as those before you believe, amana as past tense. Believe as the people before you believe, kalu, they say, nu'minu kama amana. Shall we believe like fools? Now, except the fact is, they are the fools. But they don't have no knowledge of it. <laughs> the Quran is teaching us every day what we're supposed to do. Exactly. But people don't want to read it. They want to read writings of men as opposed to the Quran. Or they can't understand it. And that's why I'm here. So I can do this. Break it down word by word, step by step, so you can see it. And any word I mention there, you take it, write it down, and go to an Arabic dictionary or lexicon and check it out to see. Because that's what I do throughout the books. Make sure that no one can mislead us today. Because our people have been through too much. It's time for the truth. What does the word Allah represent? What would God mean to you instead of Allah? When you use the word God, especially Christianity, they have this bad habit of capitalizing God at certain times and making it small in other parts of the Bible and making it look like that happened in the Greek or in the Hebrew or in the Arabic when it didn't because there are no capital letters in Hebrew. There's no capital letters in Greek, and there's no capital letters in Arabic. 
So when they read the Bible and it refers to Moses as God, or David as God, or Adam as the son of God, sometimes they make those small letters and try to make when they refer to Jesus capital letters. And this is done maliciously to misinform people. To make them think that Jesus was saying that he was a God when he, was, when he never made that statement ever in the Bible. So the word God in itself can be, you know, can describe anything that is worshipped or adorned. When we speak of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're describing the thing that brought about the spa, that brought about every living thing. You follow? So even when they say God, most of the time they mean Allah. That's another very important point. They mean to say Allah, but they just don't know that. You said that, which is very true, that, you know, a woman's place is her home. Why are we here? You know, we're all among, here among men. See, it. the difference is, you came like, let's say, Fatima or, or Um Habib or one of the other women of Rasulullah's time who came seeking him, seeking the truth too, to get questions and solve, you know, things in your mind. That's not what I mean. A woman is not a, uh, something a man uses. She's something created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and guide and nurture a man and her family. That is her job. You know, a man's responsibility is to provide for his family physically and mentally to make sure that they have means as well as proper spiritual guidance. Women have to find their way home because a woman is not complete until she's in the arms of a man that cares for her and his family as well as an environment that's providing for them. A woman, when she's not in that environment, cannot really function. When a woman's living in an apartment, receiving welfare, it's not the state of mind she belongs in. A woman is comfortable when she looks out a window and she sees crops growing. And she knows that her children will have provisions next year. When a man is out there and he's turning the soil, then she's in the house cooking the food and, and the children are being taught by the mullah, being taught by the mullah of the Quran, then her, her, her nature is perfect. We're trying to get to that state because the Christians live their life well in this country. They do all the devilishment that their doctrine says, so their women seem to be well organized and perfected. And, and the only thing that keeps the Muslim woman from being organized and perfected is the Muslim man is so full of jive. Bottom line, they're so full of mess that they're busy trying to get to Mecca so they can get Hajj on their name or showing off and impressing each other instead of building for the woman and the daughters and the sons. So the thing is, no, I'm not saying feel shame about being out. I know you have to provide for yourself because you're in a strange land, a Western world. But what we're saying is we're providing a place for that. For Muslim to raise where you and that daughter that lays right there on your shoulder sleep could be secure and protected and learn Islam and follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad according to this Quran. You follow what I'm saying? This is what you have to learn that we have to come home and build together. No one can do it for us and the Jew or the Christian is not going to help us. We have to do it ourselves. It's going to come from the labors of the men. People used to laugh when they used to see the Ansar men out on the street, on the subways, begging and doing all kinds. They used to complain. These brothers are begging. That's not Sunnah. These brothers do this. They do that. Now they walk through Bushwick Avenue, and we built a mosque from the ground up. Now, does it make a difference whether we begged up the money to build a mosque from the ground up, or whether we work for it as long as the mosque is built from the ground up and is now a place to worship Allah is the bottom line. Does it make a difference how we went to get in the land, the farmland, and the property of state where families are living now and more families are migrating up every week? Does it make a difference how we got it in a society that's against our way of life as long as we provide it for our women? You see, we have farmland. We have animals there. But we sacrifice as animals that have been raised in the name of Allah, living off the food of, of the land. It's a difference. We got to try to live Islam. It's not a religion like Christianity and Judaism where they put it on and take it off like on Sunday and Saturday. This is something we live day in and day out. And you women are supposed to be protected by us men. That is our job. And I can't blame you all when you become a menace or a rebel or cause problems or become difficult to live with because if we provide for you properly, we won't have these problems. But if, but if we provide a place and then you don't come, then that's not our fault. We have the place here. Your family should be here in a place that's practicing Islam the best way. I know you have to learn. Your, your doctrines are different and you got to learn to study us and see how crazy we are or if we're for real. Or it's just a, I understand that it says the hearts of many shall be waxed cold in the latter day. Rasulullah told us there's going to be so many false prophets and false teachers that people are going to be confused. I understand that. But don't waste so much time. Study, get these books and analyze them thoroughly through the Quran, the scriptures, and take them back to the, whatever mosque or jama you go to and ask questions and see if they know. Forget the teachings. Say, what are y'all providing for the children in the future? What are y'all providing for our food when this depression comes in? 
What are you going to provide? You see the weather's all out of whack. You, even have, you haven't had a summer or winter this year. You see the seasons are gone. Crops are dying. The man told you all just this year on television, there's droughts in the south. Remember this? Didn't I tell you all last year there'll be droughts in the south and all the animals are going to die? I told you all this before it happened. Now it's happening. Chickens are dying by the thousands. Cows are dying. Where do you think your poultry comes from? It goes to New York. Where do you think it comes from? It comes from the southern part of this country. If the crops are dying, where's the food going to come from you're going to eat this year? Smart people started learning how to eat out of cans. They started learning to eat out of cans now because that's what you're going to live off. And if you don't, you're on this health food kick and the southern part of the country is going through a depression. There's a, a drought and the crops are dying. Your body is going to go through many changes. You better start training yourself to live off cans now because you're running to that time. Then, when they start cashing bottles and turning in metal, they're preparing for war. You understand that? When America has to tell people they can get changed for bottles and they can get changed for pieces of metal, they're preparing for war. What ha anybody is in that room old enough to know what happened during the last depression? In 1945, 1944? No, you wasn't here. When people was on lines, they had soup lines in Manhattan, all up and down Wall Street. The banks closed down. People had money in their banks. They went to get their money out, and they couldn't get their money out the banks. The banks closed. Wall Street fell. The hospitals were closing because they were sending all the medical supplies overseas for the military men. You're coming back through this again. You're getting ready to go through one of those depressions. You better be out of the city and living somewhere where you live in Islam. Learn, you better start learning how to live out of cans now. Because <laughs> there's not going to be no fresh food because the man then played with the elements and now the climate is out of whack. It just goes dark in the daytime. These are the signs of the times, of the end of the world. The sky shall be blackened. When you can no longer tell men from women, just look when you can, the Rasulullah Muhammad said, when you no longer can tell the men from the women, well, walk down the street now. They got unisex stores. They got people walking around looking like they're gins. Hair orange, all sticking straight up in the air like roosters and porcupines. Walk through the village and see it. You're looking at Sodom and Gomorrah coming back out of the grave. The resurrection of the dead is not only for the righteous, but the unrighteous are coming back too. It didn't just say for the righteous, the resurrection of the dead. It says that in Revelation, when the graves shall unturn. The graves are unturning now. And out of the graves is coming the wicked. They're disguising themselves as punk rockers so you can't see that they're gins. They walk around looking dead with no color in their skin, with black lipstick in. Don't y'all see? We do not have the time to play. Y'all got, look at all those kids. So just look around, look at all them little Muslim boys and girls sitting in that room. Look around you. Look at your own kids. You brothers in there, you sisters in there. Look at these little Muslim boys and girls. You're not teaching them Arabic because you don't know it. You're not teaching them the Quran because you don't know it. You're not preparing their souls. Stop pretending you could do it because you can't. And bring them where they can be taught the Quran and taught to follow the Quran in Arabic and taught to pray properly. Stop hurting your own kids. What's wrong with you? You're holding them back. And there's no time for it. Those kids are the children that's going to save you. Rasulullah said, raise a kid in righteousness and they will call you to paradise. They could do it. You can't. Because you've already drunk to the wrath of the fornications of the holic. You've already lived with her. You've taken drugs and you've drunk in alcohol. You've desecrated your physical body. Raise the children in righteousness. Don't leave them out there amongst the beasts to be gobbled up with crack and drugs and a whole bunch of demons that call themselves human beings who are misleading people. And they're getting over as human beings. And they're not human beings, they're demons. And they're made in this last day and time because the white man, as he's called, lost his generation of people to, to punk rock. So he had to come up with something to take our kids. And he came up with this hip-hop stuff. He started with the breaking. And now he got a whole bunch of other people who are pulling our children away from righteousness down the path of drugs. All those people are drug addicts. Crack. Every time we get rid of one drug, every time we overcome another drug, he invents another. And unless we stand up and fight against it, we will perish. Nations before you have perished. Whole nations of people have been wiped out by this man. He is trying to wipe you out. He's trying to eliminate your total existence with falsehood and lies. And he's succeeding in doing it. Unless you rebel against him and establish your own kingdoms. Teach your own children. Feed your own women. You got to do this yourself because the man is not going to help you. Stop fooling yourself. Stop trying to be like him.
You better come up with solutions to the problem because the time is running out. You don't control the weather. He can declare war today and all them little boys that you see right there will be a part of it whether they want to or not. Send them to any part of the world he wants, drop them there to be shot at. Any of you brothers who was in Vietnam, you know what I'm talking about. He'll drop those kids over anywhere, right into the Arab world. He'll drop them on a helicopter and they're there to fight until they die. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. This is the devil. He is busy doing his mission in the world today because he knows his time is almost up. Everybody, Elijah Muhammad, everybody who taught, kept saying his time is almost up. You follow that? Don't keep putting off for tomorrow what you can do today. You all better come home where you belong and start to build outwards. Get these, look at all these kids. It's, it's sad to sit there and look at all of these kids there. All these young men and young women who's, who are sitting there with tawagi. They got tawagis on their heads, they got isuna clothes on, and you're not letting them be taught. For whatever reason, most of it is our own selfishness. I can't live in the community. I can't be told what to do. I can't live by those principles. I heard this about the mosque. I heard that. They said you do. They said they take this from you. They say you can't live with your wife. They say you can't see your children. A bunch of lies. They're keeping you away from the past. Wake up. The hourglass is almost empty. <laughs> خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم Those are verses 1 through 5 of Salatul Allah from the Holy Quran chapter, Separation of Cells. Now the 96th, originally the first chapter, revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Translation by as Sayyid Al-Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi. And it reads as follows. Begin all things with the illustrious names of Allah, the yield of the most merciful. O seal of the prophets of Allah, Muhammad, by the supreme sovereignty of your sustainer and creator. You are being ordered to read by beginning with the name of your illustrious sustainer who created all things. He, Allah, created all human beings of a separating cell. So read because your sustainer, Allah, is most generous. He uses the quill to teach. He, Allah, taught human beings what they would have never known. You have been listening to The True Light with as Sayyid and Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi. The Nubian Islamic Hebrew Mission would like you to write or send questions to True Light, 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11221.